Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inizor Education. Um, we talk about phenomena of light. Um, now, today's topic is just yet another phenomena, phenomenon probably, I should say, in, in, in singular, um, which is called dispersion. Now, dispersion is really a rather large um, topic, which I have decided to uh, break into, into parts. Today we will talk about dispersion um, on a flat surface. So it can be a glass, let's say a window glass, for instance. So the light goes into the um, flat surface, and then there is this dispersion. Um, and uh, at the second half of this lecture, I will talk about what happens when it goes through another um, flat surface like into the glass and then from the glass back, back, back into the air. So that's today. Um, the next lectures will be about dispersion on a prism um, and eventually maybe we will talk about rainbow because we all know about rainbow, rainbow is beautiful but the question how actually it appears on the uh, sky after the rain or maybe above the waterfall by the way, recently I was on Victoria Waterfall in Africa and uh, that was a beautiful rainbow. All the sky was actually covered with it. Anyway, um, this lecture is part of the course called Physics for Teens, presented on Unisor.com. I do suggest you to watch this lecture from the website, not only because the website is completely free and there are no ads, no strings attached, um, but also because every lecture has a textual part which is basically presented right near the video, video and textual part, notes, whatever, which is actually like a textbook. So um, consider that the whole textbook is divided between different lectures and each piece of this textbook is attached to the video. Plus there are exams which I think are very, very useful. Uh, to take because it's precisely the problem solving where your creativity, your analytical skills are developed. And as I said, the website is completely free, there are no advertisement, uh, no strings attached. Okay, so, well, I mentioned Rainbow and uh, just let me just start from, from this since it's such a beautiful um, topic. The reason for rainbow is refraction. And we basically know a lot about refraction from the previous lectures. So we're talking about, we're talking about dispersion of uh, light, in this case on a flat surface, uh, which is caused by refraction. Now, let me just remind you what refraction actually says. Well, if there is a boundary between two different substances, let's say air and glass. And there is a ray of light which comes at incident angle theta 1. Then in this particular case the light as it comes after this border into the glass would be at different angle to a perpendicular to a normal to a surface and these angles are related using this law where v1 is the speed in this case in the air and v2 is the speed in, in, in the glass. Now because this speed is higher than this, uh, uh, sorry, vice versa, this speed is lower than this, uh, speed in the glass is, is less the light is slower, um, this ratio will be uh, greater than 1, which means uh, theta 1 would be greater than theta uh, 2. So if v1 is greater than v2, we have theta 1 is greater than theta 2. And if it's less, obviously it's less. Now the problem is that these numbers are are huge actually. The speed of light is very, very 
um, big even in uh, such uh, substances as, as glass. Now, here is the fundamental property of light which is causing this dispersion phenomenon. Different lights have different wavelengths, we know about that. Different colors, I'm talking about visible light only. So we have red, for instance, with the longest wavelengths and the violent, vi violet with um, the shortest wavelengths. And this wavelength is very, very important for refraction. So if you remember, when we were talking about refraction, especially in Huygens' model, we were talking about front uh, of, the, um, of the light, light, uh, light front. Um, and then it just turns. This is turning of the wave front of the light. And obviously, it should depend somehow on the um, uh, wavelengths. The shorter waves might actually do something differently than the longer waves. And that's exactly true. It looks like the speed of light depends not only on the substance where the light actually propagates, but also on the light itself. The longer uh, light waves, like red color, have slightly higher speed in any substance except vacuum, and the shorter ones, like violet, they have lower speed. And it's really related with the wavelengths. It's kind of difficult for me right now to explain this because I, I do have to go into some quantum mechanics and, and stuff like this, which quite frankly I'm not sure I understand right now myself. But this is the fact which you just have to take as, as, as given. The wavelengths also affects the speed of propagation of the light in any substance but vacuum. In the vacuum all the wavelengths are exactly have exactly the same speed, but in some substance, even the air, uh, obviously the glass or water or whatever the transparent substance is, the wavelengths really affects the speed of light. The longer the waves, the higher the speed. Now, uh, we used to have another. Um, expression for this particular thing. We were using the refractive index of the uh, substance, which is um, um, well, n is equal to c over um, v, right? So this is the other way around, I'm sorry. So this is refractive index. This is the speed of light in the vacuum, and V is speed of light in any particular substance. So the, their ratio is actually uh, called the refractive um, index. Now if we use this instead of the speeds, we will have N2 divided by N1, reverse. So the lower speed corresponds to higher um, refractive index. Now, if it's vacuum, then V is equal to C, and vacuum is equal to uh, N is equal to 1, right? If it's air, it's not 1. For air, it's something 1, 0, 0, 0, 3, blah, blah, blah. So it's greater than 1 because the speed of light in the air is less than speed of light in the vacuum, but so little that it's almost one. So in our calculations, which we will probably carry up to like second or the third decimal point, you can consider air to be practically equivalent to vacuum. 
as far as the speed of light is concerned. But for glass, for instance, it's 1.520, if I'm not mistaken. So that's a lot. You see, 1.5, it's 50% less. So if this is like 300,000 kilometers per second, then for light, it would be, what, about 200, two-thirds of this, right? 200,000 kilometers per second inside the glass. So whenever we were talking about these numbers, they're very big and kind of difficult to uh, participate in calculations. These numbers are completely equivalent, proportional, but it's easier to deal with small numbers like 1.52 rather than uh, huge, like 200,000 kilometers per second, etc. So we will probably deal with this, and using this type of thing, we can rewrite it as sine theta 1 times n1 is equal to sine theta 2 times n2, right? Same thing, n1 and 1, 2 and 2. From which we see again a very similar law. If n1 is greater than n2, like air and glass, then the sine of theta 1 should be uh, I mean, glass. Well, let me start with this. And one is less. So it's air has about one, and two is about 1.5, right? So the relationship between sine and sines will be opposite, right? If this is greater than this, this should be less. If this is less than that, this should be greater than this, right? So if it's greater than this is less. So if light goes from um, substance with a smaller uh, re refractive index into the side, into the substance like glass with a greater refractive index, then the angle of incident should be greater than angle of refraction. So this is the right picture. This angle is greater than this because this, because n1, n2, because n1 is about 1 and n2 is about 1.5, so we have this. So that's why this angle should be greater than this angle. Okay, now here is a really a tricky thing. How did we calculate the n, the refractive index, based on this ratio, if v in some substance, in any substance, is not a constant, it's basically a range between the speed of the red light, which is higher, and speed of the violet, which is uh, lower. Well, obviously, it means it's not really the, the right kind of exactly mathematically right thing we have to approximate. Well, the thing is that the difference between the speeds of light from red to violet is really small. It exists, but it, it's really small. And so what uh, physicists have decided, they took the light which is right in the middle, which is yellow, it has the middle wavelengths between the red color and the, and the violet. And they took its speed. So this V is, is actually a speed of yellow light in any particular substance. So it gives you approximation. But it's an approximation uh, precise enough for calculations which most people are doing. Whenever it's not, people kind of make modifications. So uh, we will consider this to be as a given thing, so this will be uh, the refractive index of yellow light, uh, but we will use it for, for all lights uh, in both uh, substances, in air and, and, and the glass. Okay, so this is just a small nuance that n is actually varies based on um, the speed of uh, particular color, 
but uh, physicists have decided to use only the yellow color for this particular definition. Okay, so that's done. Now, now we will do an experiment, and we will just um, use the white light as the ray of light which is coming down onto the surface between uh, uh, air and, uh, and and the glass. So, what happens with um, white light? Well, let's just use this this law. We know n1 and n2. N1 is air, which is about 1. N2 is about 1.5, let's say 1.5, whatever, 2, 0, doesn't matter. So let's just have a concrete, um, uh, let's just uh, take concrete angle of incident and see what happens with um, the angle of refraction in this particular case. Okay, so now I know the following. When this thing is used in like general, you know, considerations, calculations, etc., uh, we are using the yellow light. But since we are talking about the, the, the dispersion right now, we need a concrete value of n for every particular color. What is it for each particular wavelength? So we have, uh, I will ex exemplify it on two, the red and violet, because they are on different um, edges of the spectrum. Everything else will be in between. So N1 for red, well, let me do it differently. N red is equal to 1.520, if I'm not mistaken, yes. And violet equals 1.538. You see, this is higher because the wavelength is shorter. As I was saying, the shorter the wavelengths, the slower uh, light goes in inside that particular substance, whatever the substance is. How much slower obviously depends on the substance. But this is for, for the glass. We are talking about, well, there is a special kind of glass, like crown glass, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, for our purpose, doesn't really matter. So these are numbers which I took from the internet, basically. I did not invent them. Real numbers. Now, so this is for glass. Now, for air, I would consider it to be 0, 1, 1. Actually, it's some other numbers after the decimal uh, digits, but since we are talking about thousands, I just cut them out. It's still really like 3 and something else. So we have this table. How can we, from this table, derive what happens with the white ray of light, which um, comes down, let's say, at angle of 30, degree incident, incident angle. Well, let's just use the formula. So we have, let's say this is alpha and this is beta. It's easier than having indices. So sine of alpha is equal to sine of 30 degrees, which is one half. Now, this n of air is always one. So n1 is equal to 1, and 1 is over there. So on the left we have 1 and 1 half. 1 half times 1. That's on the left. On the right we have sine of beta. Beta is same as theta 2. It's a refractive index times. And now let's talk about color. If this is red, it will be 1.520. If it's uh, violet, it will be 1.538. So sine of beta is equal to 1 half divided by this, right? So it's 1 divided by 2 point, either 1.520 or 1.538. So we have two different angles. And the result is that 
red light, beta equals for red, it would be 19.21 degree, and for violet, it would be 18.97 97 degree. Look, difference is not really such a big one. It's about, what, 20 something hundreds of one degree. And the whole circle is 360 degree. You can imagine how small this angle is. But it exists, and that's what's important. So, red light would go so if this is just a continuation without any kind of refraction, so a red light would be closer to it. That would be red. That's 19.21. Um, uh, it's further from the normal, from, from the uh, perpendicular. And the violet would be a smaller angle, so it would be closer. And the closer it is to a perpendicular to the normal, the greater deviation from the original direction. Deviation is basically the difference between this angle, which is same as alpha, they are vertical, and this angle. So alpha minus, uh, not al yeah, alpha minus beta, alpha being this vertical angle and beta being refractive angle, it's a deviation from the original direction. So red would be less deviated because its refraction angle will be greater and closer to the original direction. Violet would be deviated, uh, deviated more because its refraction angle would be less. Beta. So that's basically all about this particular um, uh, um, uh, phenomenon of regression on one particular surface between glass, between air and glass. Now, what happens when we are talking about window glass, for instance? There are two surfaces, first from air to glass, and then from glass back to air. So what happens? Well, let me just draw a picture which actually would be more descriptive. I'll use a different scale of this. So we have two surfaces. So this is glass, this is air, this is air. Now this is perpendicular. Now we have uh, angle about this 30 degree angle and we will continue it as the line um, line of original uh, direction of the uh, white light distribution. Now this is white light which means it consists of all the different components. So red component will go this way and violet component will be this way and everything else, like green, yellow, etc., will be in between them. So what happens now? So let's talk about red, for instance, okay? Here is perpendicular. Now, the angle of refraction uh, on the top border between air and glass becomes the air of incident on the bottom, right? So if before I had alpha and this what beta, so I had sine alpha times n air equals sine beta n um, glass. Now, the same angle beta, you see, why is it the same? This is perpendicular, this is perpendicular. And this is this, uh, um, the line which basically crossed them both. So these angles are equal. So now sine beta times a n glass 
should be now this would be gamma gamma should be equal to sine gamma times uh, an air right so now beta becomes from the refracting uh, re re refracting uh, on on the top it would be an incident for the bottom surface but now we're talking from glass to air whenever we're talking from from glass to air from a greater index uh, refractive index to a smaller refractive index you remember how angles are related it's just an opposite so in this case this n of air is less than this so this angle so this angle will be greater than this in this case this n this index of refraction is greater than this so the angle should be smaller incident should be smaller than refracting okay and what follows is you see this is sine times sine of beta times uh, n of glass and this is the same thing this is the same thing which means sine alpha times n air equals sine gamma times n air so this would be equal well this is n air and n air from this we have alpha is equal to gamma so this angle the deviation from the vertical is exactly the same as this one original one from which follows that this ray will be parallel to, to this one. So, what I'm saying is that after the second refraction, uh, if these are two parallel sides of uh, whatever substance is, in this case, glass, the resulting ray would be parallel to the original direction, but shifted. It would be shifted a little bit for the red, a little bit more, for the violet. So, after it, uh, the uh, light goes through both surfaces, one ray of, ray, uh, of uh, white light would be split into many different rays of different colors. So that's basically already, if you put some kind of screen here, and if this is a relatively narrow um, ray of light you will see maybe just a, just a little bit I mean the deviation is really very very small but in theory you will see different colors here but the colors inside will be still mixed together but on the edges you will still have um, the, the, the uh, colorful uh, uh, lights red on one end and, and violet on another so that's why the result of the white light going through this two parallel surfaces with glass in between would be that it will be wider and at the edges you will have the red and, and, and violent picture. That's what's very important actually for photography because it's really a color aberration which needs to be somehow um, dealt with and it's not easy because it really completely changes the, the picture, at least on a detail scale. So that's why it's very difficult, actually, to do the good camera. That's why the cameras, which are good, they are big and bulky, and there are many different things inside, including electronic things, which fight this problem of, um, of light aberration. On the other hand, rainbow is beautiful, and this is also the result of it. But we'll talk about ra rainbow in another lecture. So basically, that was all I wanted to say about um, dispersion on flat surfaces. Um, now, obviously, if it's something like window, it's very um, thin, basically. And the difference between left and right um, deviation of the red and, uh, uh, and the violet is tiny it's hundreds of millimeter 
um, the textual part of this lecture contains some more numbers for different colors and including this calculation of this difference between these two edges, between the red edge and the violet edge. If you have a single line, just line, mathematical line of a white light, then we will have the spectrum here which will have certain widths and the width is hundreds of one, hundreds of uh, I mean fractions, not hundreds of hundreds of uh, millimeters, but hundreds of one, hundreds parts of one millimeter, which means it's not noticeable at all. That's why we see basically the white light, at light as white light going through the window. Uh, but if this uh, glass is thick enough, then these um, rays will uh, deviate, will spread actually along a bigger distance. So that's why it would be more noticeable for thicker glass. Alright, that's it basically for today. We were addressing this dispersion on a flat surface only and uh, next lectures will be about how the dispersion um, going when we are talking about prism and the light goes through the prism. It will also in this case, now in this case, the result is parallel lights of different colors. Uh, in this case, they will have angular uh, deviation as well. Not only linear deviation, but angular as well. And then maybe we'll talk about rainbow <laughs> after we will prepare ourselves to all the different forms and shapes of uh, pieces of glass or pieces of uh, uh, um, caplets of water, then we'll talk about rain. Okay, I do suggest you to read the notes for this lecture because uh, the pictures are much nicer over there and there are some mm, tables which basically give you exact numbers of uh, what uh, are these uh, uh, reflective indices are and what's an exact uh, linear deviation of uh, of the single ray of white light whenever it goes through the window glass, let's say. All right, that's it. Thank you very much and good luck.